when we on the streets in the war zones. War zone. Pushing this truth until we get called home. Call home. I got brothers I can fall on. Fall Any on. situation, brothers I can call on. Call on. All we gotta do is log on. Log Send on. a chain message, seeing if the God's home. God's home. A brother need help now. Help no matter now. what it is, we deny self now. Self now. Nobody getting let down. let down. For the most high, we gotta put our best down. Best down. Uh. Man, I love this brotherhood. brotherhood. On the road again, hitting up another hood. Another hood. Up north, down south, Midwest, Midwest. it don't matter. We gon' bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Scriptures keep ringing out. Bring it out. We gon' speak bring it. We gon' rap it. Even sing it out. Sing it out. Camp shirts blinging out. Blingin out. We gon' shine with these laws. What you be about? You be about. All right, shalom, most high in Christ. Bless everybody. Uh, welcome to today's class. I'm Brother Raphael, and to my left, Brother Jacob. Today's topic is called Strive for the Truth unto the Death, and the Lord will fight for thee. True persecution. Um, you know, it's, it's a narrative out here that's been told for quite some time in the eyes of so called Christianity. Uh, these different various people in different religions, different groups, whatever you want to call them. They, they seem to think that they're under true persecution. And the thing about it is, what is persecution? Because people seem to get the wrong idea about persecution. They think persecution is disagreeing with your ideology. Okay, if I don't agree with your ideology or your, um, your religion or whatever you may believe in, you may say, oh, they're persecuting me. Or they may say something about you, you know, may come at you some kind of way and persecute. You know, like let's say they say something about us. I mean, hey, we're not looking at it as being. Persecution is when your life is on the line. That's true persecution. And let's just find out who is really persecuted in the scriptures because a lot of people seem to think that, you know, they're persecuted. I love, I love to say it in Christianity, especially. Go ahead. Yeah, did Christ say you'll be persecuted for righteousness' sake? We go on to it. And that's what they don't understand. What is righteousness according to the Bible, okay? Because to understand it, the truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters, is the so called blacks and the so called Hispanics whose fathers are Negroid and in any sense, we are the biblical Israelites. Understand that, okay? And that's what you have to understand. These are the true people of the book that has been persecuted, okay? For righteousness sake. We don't go over that, okay? Go over that, Lord's will, okay? Now, it's customary. You just can't just say you have laws and no Christ. And you just can't say you have Christ and no laws. They have to be coupled together. So, the book of Isaiah Chapter 8 and verse 20, and then we go to Isaiah, then we're gonna go to Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 20. Uh-huh. To the law mm -hmm. and to the testimony. Now the Bible says to the law. Now, some of y'all who don't know, if you knew, um, you have to understand that the laws are from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Okay, understand it and the testimony. So now we jump from book to book, okay, to clarify what is the testimony. According to the Bible. So now let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10, and we're going back to Isaiah 8 and 20. Go ahead, brother. The book Revelation, chapter 19, and verse 10. Go ahead. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Okay. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. Mm. I am thy fellow servant. I am thy fellow servant. We are the servants of the Most High. The reason why he told him not to, John the Revelator was told not to bow down to the angel because he had been in the midst of idolatry, okay? So it says, he's letting you know that we are thy fellow servants. Go ahead, brother. I am thy fellow servant. Go ahead. And of thy brethren mm. that have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Christ, the Messiah. Some of y'all want to say Yahweh Shai, but we understand that he is the son of the most high, Go ahead. Worship God. Worship the Most High. We call him the Most High, brothers and sisters, because 
He has no other power above him. Okay, go ahead. For the testimony of Jesus uh -huh. is the spirit of prophecy. So understand something, brothers and sisters. If you don't have the spirit of Christ on you, you will not understand this Bible in its entirety. You'll be lost. You'll be sitting there reading the scriptures and have no understanding because you don't have the Holy Ghost on you to have understanding. And that's the, that's the keeping the commandments and the faith of Christ. That's what you have to have on you to understand the scriptures. Okay, understand that. Go back to Isaiah 8 and 20 and then on Proverbs 6.23. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 20. Go ahead. To the law. Okay. And to the testimony. Mm. If they speak not according to this word. If they don't speak precept upon precept, line upon line, as the Bible is written, that's what they're supposed to do. That's how you're supposed to read the Bible. Go ahead, brother. It is because... There is no light in them. Now, let's find out what the precept is to understand it. What is the light according to the Bible? Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 23. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 23. Go ahead, brother. For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp. Go ahead. And the law is light. The law is light because what the laws in Christ do, brothers and sisters, is help you navigate through sin. Darkness is sin. So let's just give you the example. If I'm a brother or a sister. Who loves to lie? I can't tell the truth to save my life. What you do, you cover the laws through Christ, filter them through Christ, and say, okay, did Christ lie? Was Christ a thief? Okay, so that's how you're supposed to do with the law. Law and the testimony, you're supposed to filter the laws through Christ to have understanding. Go ahead, brother. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Because reproofs of instructions are the way of life because reproof basically is correction. It corrects you from being a sinner, which is transgression of the law, to being righteous, to being a person who wants to keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. And it boils down to intent. See, some of y'all understand that law and the testimony, you have to have both of them. You just can't just say, I just have one, or I just believe in Christ. But you don't have the testimony. You don't have the laws. You know, and just believing just ain't going to get it. You can believe anything. But it's having, having the works behind the belief. That's what you have to have in this truth. Now, Strive for this truth until the death. That's what the Bible says. You don't believe me? Let's go right to it. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 4 and verse 28. See, this is what y'all have to understand. In this walk, y'all, that we call the truth, we're going to deal with some issues. Um, our forefathers, our foreparents, we, we actually we celebrated the Feast of Dedication a while ago. We're going to go back to the Maccabees and show y'all true persecution and how we and we became Gentiles and we went through that before. But we, we just we just want to touch on it again to show y'all something to show y'all true persecution, because a lot of people seem to think that because we in this truth, you're persecuted. No, you're not. You're not persecuted because last I checked, did nobody tell you if you read that Bible one more time, I'm going to kill you. And it's coming because I'm going to tell you it happened back then. It's going to happen again. Because remember something, when you stand strong for Christ, if you said you was a Christian back in the day, you mean you ready to die. It ain't that so-called Christianity today that they got this nonsense now and I'm persecuted. How the hell are you persecuted? Ain't nobody put a gun to your head. Matter of fact, how many people hate the Christians today? Because everybody want to hold hands with everybody and love everybody. So why would I hate that? That's easy. But what's hard it's the difficult gate, the straight gate. When you outright condemn wickedness, the, I'm talking about condemn wickedness, black like, like I'm not standing for what goes against God and willing to die for it. See, that's what persecution is. Persecution ain't because I don't agree, I don't agree with you because I don't accept Christianity. That ain't persecution. Okay? And we're gonna find our true persecution in the scriptures. So let's go to it, brother. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, and verse 28. Go ahead. Strive for the truth unto death. The Bible says, strive for truth unto death. What does that mean, brothers and sisters? What that totally means is you're striving for this truth to either when Christ come back or you check out. That means there's no getting out of this. That means once you understand 
that you are in this marvelous truth, brothers and sisters, the only way out is death. Because if you, let's say you come to the knowledge, I'm going to give you an example. We, all, we always do this before we do the break of the bread. Let's say you come to the truth, right? You got woken up, you know you're an Israelite, you repented. And what happens, you allow Satan to get in your spirit and trick you and to make you believe this is a cult. To make you believe, oh no, no, you have to keep commandments. To make you believe that, hey, you know what? Um, them, them, them Israelites, they're just a bunch of, you know, racist, whatever you want to call us, hate group, right? And you allow that stuff to get in your spirit without looking at the scriptures for yourself. And you decide, you know what? This is a cult. I'm out. Do you know what you've done? You put Christ to open shame. That means you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. What that means is, there's no coming back from that. So that's why when the scripture says, read it again, brother. What does it say? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4 and verse 28. Go ahead. Strive for the truth unto death. Go ahead. And the Lord shall fight for thee. And the Lord shall fight for thee because we out there, we out there pushing this truth to the apocalypse on the four corners of the earth. The Lord will fight for us because we are sincerely going ahead to teach our people how they're supposed to repent, come back to keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. That's our job. Now, whether you want to believe it, that's up to you. It don't make no difference to us. Okay? Is that it? Yeah, that was it. Okay. Now, let's go to the book of Matthew. Chapter 10, starting verse 1. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 1. Go ahead. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, mm -hmm. he gave them power mm -hmm. against unclean spirits. Go ahead. To cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness mm -hmm. and all manner of disease. Go ahead. Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first, Simon who is called Peter, mm -hmm. and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, mm. and John, his brother, mm -hmm. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, mm -hmm. and, and Labius, mm -hmm. whose surname was Thaddeus. Go ahead. <clears throat> Simon the Canaanite. Now, when it says Simon the Canaanite, let's not get crazy. All that's, it means is just of the land. That's, yeah, yeah, it's an axe, too. Right, right, right. I'm just giving an example because our people get twisted. So it just let you know he's just from the land. He's still an Israelite. Okay, that's basically what it is. Go ahead. Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Go ahead. These 12 Jesus sent forth mm. and commanded them, saying, Go ahead. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Why is Christ saying that? If Christ is supposed to be for the Gentiles, why is he saying that? Okay. Keep reading. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Okay. But, what he, but, but where he wants you to go? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And tell them what? And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why Christ didn't say go to everybody about the kingdom? If the kingdom is supposed to be for everybody, why isn't the Messiah saying go to everybody? He said go not the way to the Gentiles. He said go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple. Verse 8. Right. Heal the sick. Mm -hmm. Cleanse the lepers. Go ahead. Raise the dead. Mm -hmm. Cast out devils. Uh-huh. Freely ye have received, freely give. Oh, so you mean to tell me we can't charge? We can't charge a, um, a fee, a speaking engagement? Well, what did he say? What did Christ say? This, see, this is, this is a hit on you so-called pastors, too, because why y'all charge people for the word? Even a handshake. Right. Why would you do that? Because the scriptures, what, is, what does Christ say? Go ahead, read. Go uh, ahead. Verse 8. Go ahead. Heal the sick. Okay. Cleanse the lepers. Go ahead. Raise the dead. Go ahead. Cast out devils. Go ahead. Freely ye have received, freely give. Go ahead. <laughs> Verse 9. Uh-huh. 
provide neither gold nor silver, uh-huh. nor brass in your purses, Go ahead. nor script for your journey, mm. neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. Mm. Mm. And unto into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, mm-hmm. inquire who in it is worthy. Go ahead. And there abide till ye go thence. Go ahead. And when ye come into an house, salute it. Salute it. Go ahead. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. Mm, shalom. Right. <laughs> but if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. Go ahead. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, mm-hmm. when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. So that means you reject. What that means is, brothers and sisters, if we let's say we go and we teach in the streets, right? And we have an uprising of people who don't want to hear what we have to say. Okay, fine. Christ says, "Dust your f- dust the dust you know dust your f- d- actually dust your shoes." Basically, he's saying. So us, it makes us no difference. We're go- we're to preach the word. Now, whether you want to hear or when you want to forbear, right. it makes no difference to us. But our job is to push the truth to the apocalypse. Now, if you receive us, cool. If you don't, what, 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 let, let's read. What else he got to say? Go ahead. Verse 15, verily I say unto you, uh-huh. it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah mm. in the day of judgment. The day of what? The day of judgment. Go ahead. Than for that city. Okay, keep going. Behold, I send you forth as sheep. Didn't we just say, didn't he just talk about the sheep? Lost sheep. Lost sheep houses, he right? said, I send you forth as sheep. Go ahead. In the midst of wolves. Mm-hmm. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. What that means, brothers and sisters, when he says, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves, what that means, let me use an example. Let's say we in the streets preaching, right? And let's say the police rolls up. How, how do we, how we, we know that we're dealing with a, de- uh, we know we're dealing with Satan's system. Why would I say, that's the damn devil right there. Get the hell away from here. Do that, you know what's going to happen. You know what police does to our people. So you have to be wise, use, use common sense, what you do when you're in camp mode. You say, you know what? Guess what? Let's keep commandments so we don't have to worry about uh, the man coming over here bothering us. Because he, remember, he ain't a terror to good works. Right. So if I'm telling my people, be lawful and in order, what can he say? You see my point? So you have to be wise. You sort of do, what does the scripture say? What does the scripture say? <laughs> <laughs> It says, Behold, I send ye forth as uh-huh. sheep in the midst of wolves. You better believe that. Be ye f- therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Harmless as doves. In other words, don't cause an insurrection. Right. <laughs> don't cause an insurrection. Right. Don't go out here getting your own little uprising and <laughs> I'm going to go out here and we're going to deal with it. No. You, you, listen, we're in captivity. We can't right. roll like that. I mean, you know, it's going to be a time for that. When Christ comes back, oh, yeah, he's going to set everything in order. Believe that. So right now, our job is to go ahead and teach our people, bring our people together, okay, peacefully. We don't have to go out there and do and, and, and incite an insurrection. We don't, that's not what we're supposed to do. Christ didn't tell you to do that. Keep reading. Verse 17. Right. But beware of men. Beware of who? Men. Go ahead. For they will deliver you up to the council. You see that? You see that today? Because they want to deliver up, they want to deliver the truth up the councils. They don't like that. Same way they were doing back then. Same thing. Same mentality. Read on. And they will scourge you in their synagogue. Now, that also means, too, brothers and sisters, you can have people in the truth that's going to be against you, too. You know, unfortunately, you can have some people that's going to turn their back on you. So we have to stand strong as it is written because I'm going to tell you, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Believe that. Read on. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake. For whose sake? For my sake. For Christ's sake. Not based on because you're a pastor. Not based on for a false doctrine. No, for his sakes. Because people ain't going to like that. But go ahead, keep reading. For a testimony against them. Against who? For a testimony against them. And who else? And the Gentiles. I thought we supposed to be for the Gentiles. Christ clearly said against them and the Gentiles. 
So with that, so this word we're teaching, they're not gonna like that. Right. They don't like what we're saying. They don't like the fact we're saying that blacks and Hispanics are the Israelites. They don't like the fact that we're telling you come out of the ways of this place, of the world. Uh, you know, they don't like that. You don't supposed to deal with the nations. They don't like that. They hate that. Christ has told you, go out of the way of the Gentiles. And he said, against them and the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So is Christ contradicting himself? You see, you see, you see how this is written in red, isn't it? Yep. All right, then. Keep reading, brother. People think we're crazy. Verse 19. Right. But when they deliver you up, uh -huh. take no thought how or what ye shall speak. Go ahead. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. Go ahead. For it is not that it's not ye that speak. Right. But the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. That's why we're able to speak boldly with these scriptures, precept upon precept. It ain't us speaking. So y'all mad at the word. Y'all, it's not about us. Because you never say, you never hear us speaking our own words. We're speaking as it is written. So that's why the Lord letting you know it's the spirit of your father. Go ahead. And the brother, I mean, yeah, and the brother shall deliver up the brother in death. That's to coming. death. That's coming. You see in it now. You see, even out like you got fellow Israelite brothers and sisters, honestly, is gonna get to that point. Even people that's outside of the truth that's supposed to be our brothers gonna do the same thing. They hate us so much, they're gonna deliver us up to the enemy. Because they're saying, oh, man, yeah, yeah, look look at them. You know, them daggone black Hebrew Israelites. I'm just keeping it honest, y'all. It's coming. And y'all, y'all, see, people think we're making this up. We're not making this up. We're going to go back to history. It's, yeah, this happened in the Inquisition, too. Right. We're going to go back into that. All someone had to do is accuse you. Accuse, say that uh, you Accuse you of keeping commandments. Right. You a Judaizer. <laughs> there they go. There, there, there they go. They wear those fringes. Look at them. That's how you know who they are. Mm-hmm. Look at them. They keep the commandments. See? I'm telling you. We see y'all think we're not joking. We're serious about this, y'all. This is serious business. This truth is serious. Keep reading. And the father, the child, mm -hmm. and the children shall rise up against their parents uh -huh. and cause them to be put to because death. Because what happens when the child comes into the truth or vice versa, that person may be stuck in a different doctrine. You guys are in a cult. Oh, man. You know, that ain't go right there. See, y'all, see, it's coming. It's going to get hot. It's going to, the heat going to get turned up. Y'all don't, y'all, y'all see this stuff going on today. You see the prophets is being fulfilled. You seeing it. We're going to go to that. Insurrections. All these different things are happening within, under your nose, and you can't see it. Because you want to know why? We too busy on the whole hands with everybody. Now realize you got enemies. And believe me, when you come to this knowledge and keep the, keep the truth and stand stiffly for these commandments, you're going to be considered what? Dangerous. And we're going to go back to history to show y'all how our people die for this truth, y'all. That's true persecution. Come on, keep reading, bro. Verse 22. Yeah, verse 22. Yeah. And ye shall be hated of all men of, for my name's sake. Think about that. Are these so-called Christians hating about all men for their name's sake? Hell no. Because they ain't keeping commandments. Because what are you giving up for the Lord? You, you get to eat anything. Do whatever the hell you hold hands with everybody. How are you different? How are you different? How are you set apart? Because everybody doing it, everybody holding hands. You ain't set apart. Like you got the LGBTQ community, right? right? But right. they're also in the church. Right. You got pastors. Right. Marrying other pastors, men and women. Right. How that how how, how 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 is that being hated? Because remember something, the Lord is against all that. Right. <laughs> so you gonna be but you gonna be persecuted for righteousness sake. Uh-huh. Not wickedness. I want verse twenty three now. Verse twenty three. But when they persecute you in this city. When they do what? When they persecute you in this city. Go ahead. Flee ye into another. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you, ye should not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Let me tell y'all something. Mm. <laughs> Whoa. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I ain't saying that. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Until the Son of Man be come. Until the Son of Man be come. <laughs> this is y'all have to understand. When Christ come back, y'all, he ain't playing no games. Okay? Judgment first must come at us first that know better. Then it's going to come upon the other nations. Because remember something, the Lord doesn't love the nations. You can say whatever the heck you want to say. We can prove that. So the point is, us being the true Israelites of the Bible, our job is to do exactly what Christ has told the disciples to do. The same thing, if you're a disciple, an apostle, what are you really? You are a follower of Christ. So right now, our job is to do exactly what he told us. We don't have these spiritual powers, of course, but still we're supposed to go to every city, go all over to push, push this word to the apocalypse. Then the end shall then come. Then the end shall come. That's why he's saying that. Right. He's explaining. He's showing you what's going to come shortly to this place. Damn. But let's go back to some history of our forefathers. Let's go back to the second Maccabees. First Maccabees, as a matter of fact. Go to first Maccabees chapter 1 and verse 41. Mm. Let's go right to it, y'all. We're going to show y'all true persecution. Mm. See, some of y'all don't know nothing about this because some of y'all don't have an apocrypha. But see, there's a reason, there's a reason why the apocrypha was taken out of the Bible because of stuff like this. Because what it shows you is the white man took rule, rulership, things started getting, took the turn for the worse. It also proves also, brothers and sisters, that the Greeks didn't start civilization. That's another lie they've been told. But see, they don't, they, they don't want to tell you that, though. See? But go ahead, read on, brother. Uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Verse 41. Go ahead. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom uh -huh. that all should be one people. Don't that sound familiar? He want everybody to be gathered together and, and you know, they're one people as long as he's ruling. As long as man ruling, for some of you urban apologetics out there, why do they call you an urban apologetic if y'all supposed to be in the same doctrine? It's a division there. You got the blacks and the whites, but you're in Christianity, though. But here he says, come together and be one people. That's the same thing, one nation under God, right? Don't they say that, the Pledge of Allegiance? But guess who's ruling, though? Guess who's making laws to affect your life? So-called white man is. It ain't a hate campaign. It's a truth campaign. It's not a hate campaign. It's a truth campaign. Read on, brother. Verse 42. Go ahead. And everyone should leave his laws. No one else has laws but the Israelites. They know what they're doing. Okay, go ahead. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. That's democracy. Because remember, they said everyone should leave his laws, right? So you leave all your ideology at the door. But follow democracy, follow this man's ideology and his religions. So everyone, so they want Israelites to do the same thing. Same way today. They want us to leave what we believe in the scriptures and follow their suit. Keep reading. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Same way today with these pastors. These so-called, they, they, we, leave, we leave what the scriptures say to go follow our oppressor. Same thing, same spirit. It says many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. His customs, right? Same way today. Go ahead, keep reading. And sacrifice unto idols mm -hmm. and profane the Sabbath. Same thing. Keep reading. For the king has sent messen has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem uh -huh. and the cities of Judah. Go ahead. That they should follow the strange laws of the land. Same thing. Keep reading. And forbid burnt offerings mm -hmm. and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple. And that they should profane the Sabbaths and festivals. Same day. with a day. Don't keep you don't have to keep commandments. All you gotta do is just believe on Jesus. Same thing. They is geared against the Israelites. But, it's, but keep reading though. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. Go ahead. Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. Don't they have it today with these churches? Chapels of idols, because you got idolatry big time in the church. So-called church. Go ahead, keep reading. And sacrifice swine's flesh. Go ahead. And unclean beasts. Mm. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised. Mm -hmm. And make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. Mm. To the end, that they might forget the law. That's the purpose. Because right now, we're transforming into Gentiles right now. 
Because what they're doing, they're forcing their customs upon our people the same way they did in slavery, even now with Christianity. They were doing it back then because they would say, if you got quote, and we're going to keep reading, persecution is when you know your life's on the line. During this time, but you was caught keeping commandments, you was put to death. It was no, it was no if and buts about it. Okay? Keep reading. And changed all the ordinances. Did, don't they do that with the commandments? They changed the Sabbath day? They changed all the ordinances of God? Keep reading. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, mm -hmm. he said he should die. Could you imagine that? If you didn't do the king's commandments and you kept the commandments of God, you had a choice. Either you're going to keep the commandments of God or keep this man's sick laws. Or else you're going to die. Keep reading. <laughs> I don't think people understand. Um, verse 51 now. Verse 51. In the selfsame manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people. He appointed what? Overseers. Where are the overseers today? <laughs> Police officers. Right. Just like in the taskmaster, exactly. Same things. They, 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 the same spirit exists. Yeah, we did a <laughs> class on that spirit. Yeah. Same thing over and over. Same thing. It never changes. Keep reading. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Keep going. Your point, overseers. Overseers over all the people. Commanding, yeah, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. Go ahead. Then many of the people were gathered unto them, to wit, everyone that forsook, forsook the law, and so they committed evils in the land. See, because that's the thing. Now you have to make a choice, because now you have to choose whether we keep this man's wicked society laws or I'm going to keep God's laws. It's, it's, coming, it's coming back again. This is going to happen again. Believe that, y'all. Y'all think this is a, a fairy tale? Keep reading. And drove the Israelites into secret places, mm -hmm. even wheresoever they could flee for succor, well, which means comfort. Comfort, right. right. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 54. Now the 15th day of the month Kaslu, mm -hmm. in the hundred forty and fifth year, they set up the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Mm -hmm. So it's telling you, so it's the same thing in that they doing the desolation abomination with our people now, because not right, because right now you're the temple now, the people's the temple of Israel. So the desolation the abomination they're doing it now, right now, that we we are abominable to our, we're abominable. Because we eat unclean foods, we're not keeping commandments, okay? The Lord does, is not with us right now because we're still in the midst of sin. Go ahead. And the land is desolate. Right. Because we're not there. Right. Go ahead. And build it idols, idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side. On every side. This is in Judah. This is right in Jerusalem. Keep reading. And burnt incense at the doors of their of their houses. Go ahead. And in the streets. Go ahead. And when they had rent in pieces the books of the law. Why which, why would they do that? Why would they rent in pieces the book of the law? You gotta tell them what it is. <laughs> it's the Bible. Right. It's, that's the book of the law, the Bible. Yeah, because our people don't they don't realize it's the whole book is it's about the law, the law, right. <laughs> so what they do is say when they had when they had rent in pieces, the, they did what? The books of the law, go ahead. which they found, which they found. Go ahead. They burnt them with fire. They burned it with fire because they know if the if the if we keep keeping commandments, they know it's gonna keep us secure with the Most High. If we break commandments, they know the Lord ain't gonna be with us. They know that. Why do you think they burnt the book? Why do you think they burnt the Bible? Go ahead. And wheresoever, whoso, wheresoever was found with any, the book of the Testament, or if any consented to the law, mm -hmm. the king's commandment was that they should put him to death. Think about that, y'all. So you got caught with the Bible back then, or they caught you keeping commandments, 
Yeah, consent. That's what that consent is. Right. You're keeping commandments. Right. If you, if, you, if you would keep a commandments during this time, these Edomites was putting you to death. Same way today. If they catch you, like let's say they put a decree out. It's, it, they, they can do that. Because right now, they don't like us speaking out against homosexuality. And that's in the Bible, right? Show you something. Let's say I'm in the street and I'm preaching, right? We out there, we, we out there teaching. And someone that's from the LBG community, whatever you want to call it, they roll up. And we're teaching the Bible. Now we ain't called them no word. We ain't called them nothing out their name. We're going as it is written. And they decide, say, hey, those guys are a hate group. They hate me. And they, 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 and what they can do, I'm showing y'all something, because remember, it's laws against that. They can go to the higher laws of the land and try to come at you like that. Same thing back then. Because if you was keeping commandments, they was going to persecute you behind. Same way today, it's, it's coming back, y'all. It's coming back. Because when you stand for righteousness, like Christ said, for my name's sake, he's telling you what's going to come. Because it's twofold. It was for the disciples back then and the apostles. It's even for the new disciples today. It's coming, y'all. Keep reading. Verse 58. Right. Thus did they by their authority unto the Israelites. Unto who? The Israelites. They ain't talking about nobody else. By authority, which means it was higher, higher ups that put this in place. Laws. Okay. Go ahead. Keep reading. Every month. To as many as were found in the cities. Go ahead. Now the five and twentieth day of the month, they did sacrifice upon the idol altar, which was upon the altar of God. Mm. At which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women. They did what? Put to death certain women. And, and, and then we're going to see why they put these women to death. Go ahead. That had caused their children to be circumcised. All because they want to have the children circumcised. These devils put this, these children to death. Put, the, put, the, put the women to death. That's just to keep the commandments. Women and children. Women and children. They have no regard from, for the old or the young. Keep reading. Verse 61. And they hang the infants. They hang the what? They hang the infants uh -huh. about their necks and rifled their houses and slew them that had circumcised them. Sounds like a doggone insurrection to me. Sounds like um, a mob mentality to me. Let me tell y'all something. Let's just keep it real. This man always had a mob mentality. What do you think the Ku Klux Klan was doing? Mob mentality. What you think happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Mob mentality. Rosewood. Rosewood. Mob mentality. When you think of the mob, who you think of when you think of the mob? So-called white man. You think of, you think of some, some Italians being the mob. There's always been a mob mentality. Have you ever seen us organize a mob to go hurt somebody? Go ahead, bro. Uh, uh, I got a book called 100 Years of Lynching. Right. Every single lynching was done by a mob. Mob. An angry white mob. You think things have changed? You think persecution ain't going to keep going on? What y'all think? Y'all think, because y'all in 2021, you think things ain't going to, the attitudes ain't changed? It's going to keep on going on. Because the same spirit exists back then, will come back again. Y'all think it's crazy? Y'all think we crazy? You can you see what's going on. Keep reading, brother. <laughs> And they did what? They did what? Read it again, sixty-one, so you can understand what he's talking about. Verse sixty-one, and they hanged the infants about their necks, and rifled their houses, and slew them that had circumcised them. Go ahead. How be it? Right. Many in Israel were fully resolved mm -hmm. and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Therefore. They chose rather to die mm. that they might not be defiled with meats and that they might not profane the holy covenant. So then they died. Think about that, y'all. Think about that. All because they didn't want to eat no unclean food to make their bodies abominable. 
They said we were, we were ready to die before we do this. Then transgress the covenant right. of the Lord. Right. Who was only given to Israel. But you got Christians that claim they're going to be in the new covenant. Right. And they're not willing to give up any damn thing for right. the Lord. Right. 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 And I'm going to say this to y'all too. If you tithing, why are you in, why are you in the old covenant? Think about that. You tithing, sir, and we can deal with that with tithing. That means, first of all, you back on sacrifice. So you want to talk about doggone uh, talking about covenants. If you tithing, you're in the old covenant. Because that's what the old covenant was based on animal sacrifice, because you was given what? Sacrifice to who? The Levites. So at the end of the day, you want to talk about covenants all day. You think we're crazy? Why Christ ain't saying the New Testament tithe? Or their favorite Paul. Right. He didn't tithe. He didn't he tithe. Homes. Right. Think about that. Since y'all want to jump on the covenant situation, because the new old covenant, y'all still in the old covenant. Tithing and offering. Excuse me? <laughs> but yeah, you're supposed to be about covenants, though. Foolishness. Okay? Sam Maccabees, man. We're going to 2 Maccabees, chapter 7 now. Let's go to a sister since we talked about the women. We're dealing with true persecution now. How much we read? Uh, shoot, man. I don't want to read the whole thing, but just read up. Just, just, um, just, just start. I'm, I'm going to tell you when to stop. Go ahead. Second Maccabees chapter 7, start of verse 1. All right, Second Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 1. Go ahead. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken. And compelled by the king against the law. Sounds familiar? Again, always against the law. Ain't that something? <laughs> always, always against God's laws. That's the way. That's this this the same man y'all follow? Yep. Same man saying he always against the law, ain't it? But you want to follow along with it. Keep reading. To taste swine's flesh. Go ahead. And were tormented with scourges and whips. Mm. But one of them that spake first said thus, What wouldst thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die. Ready to do what? Ready to die. We ain't talking about Biggie. Because Biggie made a, made a record called Ready to Die. But this is real right here about Ready to Die. They say they're ready to do what? Ready to die. Rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. Think about that, y'all. They about to die for the law. But yet, yeah, you got our people out here, oh, you don't have to keep the commandments, brother. Meanwhile, our people was catching hell trying to keep commandments. That's true persecution because you, they said they had to die to keep commandments. I mean, excuse me, they'd rather die than break commandments. I'm sorry, I want to get that correct. Keep reading, brother. Verse 3. Then the king, being in a rage... Mm. Think about that. What makes them so angry about us keeping commandments? <laughs> you following the Lord. Like the same thing right. with Daniel. Right. We King's were, hot at him. Like make the fire as hot as you right. can get it. That's, that's where we're going. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm glad you know. We, got it. We, got to, we have to hit Daniel. Go ahead. Commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot. <laughs> which forthwith... Being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first and to cut off the utmost parts of his body. Mm. The rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Could you picture that, y'all? Same thing they do. They did in, in, in slavery. Right. Making you watch. Right. Same thing they did. Same thing they did watch, making us watch to make others fear. This is the same man that you're supposed to love. Do you think, oh, yeah. Okay, keep reading. Now, when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him, being yet alive, to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. What type of people would do something like that to somebody? Edomites. What type of people would think of something? The most evil, despicable thing you'll do to a human being, who would ever think of something like that? Edomites. Read. <laughs> 
uh, verse. No, I'll keep reading. And and as the vapor of the pan was for good space dispersed. Okay. Uh -huh. They exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, <laughs> saying thus, the Lord God looketh upon us and in truth mm. have comfort in us as Moses in his song. Didn't we talk about that song, the song of Moses? Moses in his song. Go ahead. Which witness to their faces, gosh, <laughs> declared, saying, and he shall be confirmed in his service. He should be comforted. Comforted. Mm -hmm. So when the first was dead after this manner, they bought the second to make him a mocking stock. Mm -hmm. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head. Did they do that to our people? Even in slavery over here, they did the same thing. Mocking stock. Scalping. Scalp you. Cut your head. Do all these different things to our people. Keep reading. They asked him, Wilt thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body? Go ahead. But he answered in his own language and said, No. Wherefore, he also received the next torment in order as the former did. Mm. And when he had at the first gasp, he said, Thou like a fury takest us out of this present life. Mm -hmm. But the king of this world shall raise us up. Mm -hmm. Who have died for his laws unto everlasting life. So they understood back then, if you kept commandments, you have opportunity to have eternal life. The same way Christ told the rich man, when the rich man asked, good master, what thing must I do to have eternal life? They understood back then, if I keep commandments, the king is capitalized. They know Christ. Back then, okay, who have died for his laws unto everlasting life. They understand if I keep commandments in the faith of Christ, even back then, the law and the testimony. See, they understood that. Go ahead. After him was the third made a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put out his tongue. And that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully. Go ahead. And said courageously, these I had from heaven. And for his laws, I despise them. Mm. And from him, I hope to receive them again. <laughs> In so much that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage. For that he, 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 for he, that he nothing regarded the pains. Mm. Now when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, it is a good, it is good being put to death by men mm -hmm. to look for hope from God, mm. to be raised up again by him. As for thee, <laughs> thou shalt have no resurrection to life. Think about that. That means they ain't getting a resurrection. He already know that the end, your end, sir, you ain't coming back. Think about that. Jump down to um jump down to verse 18. Verse 18. After him also they brought the sixth, who being ready to die, said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against our God. <laughs> Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us. But think not thou that takest in hand to strive against God, <laughs> that thou shalt escape unpunished. Mm. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage because of the hope she had, she had in the Lord. Mm. Yea. She exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. Mm. She said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came out of my womb. Into my womb. Oh, into my womb. Mm -hmm. For I neither gave you breath nor life. Mm. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless, the creator of the world, who formed the generation of man 
and found out the beginning of all things with also of his own mercy give you breath and life again <laughs> as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. For his law's sake. Mm, mm, mm. Keep going. Keep going. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised mm. and suspected it to be a reproachful speech, <laughs> whilst the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man mm. if he would turn from the laws of his fathers and that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. Man, think of it. <laughs> <laughs> Who would even ask such a thing? Are you serious? You killed all my brothers? Yep. Tormented them? Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised that she would counsel her son. But she, bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, mm. spake in her country own language on this manner. O oh, my son, have pity upon me that bare thee nine months in my womb, and gave thee suck three years, and nourished thee, and brought thee up unto this age, and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, Look upon the heaven mm. and the earth mm. and all that is therein and consider that God made them of things that were not. And so was mankind likewise. And so made and was mankind made likewise. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. Mm. While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the law. Of who? Of the law. Go ahead. That was given unto our fathers by Moses. And thou... That has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of God. Mm. For we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastising and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. There you go. Woo. So understand something, brothers and sisters. That's true persecution right there. You mean to tell me we not, we're not going to pay homage to that sister and the seven sons that died for the law? But you telling our people to break the commandments? Are you serious? Man, Amazing. He, he's saying, he's saying, will thou again at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Exactly. He know it's coming. Let's go to Daniel. Chapter 3, start of verse 1. Be showing y'all another patriarch. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. All this stuff these brothers went through, and then you're going to say, oh, the law's done away with. Mm -hmm. That's complete unrighteousness. Right. The book of Daniel, chapter 3, and verse 1. Go ahead. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, mm -hmm. whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, mm -hmm. in the province of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, mm -hmm. the governors, mm -hmm. and the captains, mm -hmm. the judges, and the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, mm -hmm. and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image. 
which Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Same thing today. This Babylon the Great. Yeah, like that Christmas tree. <laughs> right. They have us come together to do what? To be in idolatry. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Then the princes, the governors and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Mm -hmm. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, mm. that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, mm -hmm. flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, Ye fall down and worship the golden image. Same thing when the Pledge of Allegiance come on. Same thing when you're at these sporting events, they have you rise and put your hand over your heart. Same mentality. Exactly. Same thing. Same this Babylon, this ancient Babylon, this Babylon the Great. Right. Keep breathing. Same mentality. Go ahead. The king set up, and whoso falleth not down <laughs> and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. You see that? That's persecution right there. Yep. That means if you don't bow down to this man, you can put to death. Keep going. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image mm. that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Don't it sound familiar? Ooh. So the Chaldeans with the, with the elite sect of the Babylonians, it'd be, it'd be equivalent today of the elite sect of Babylon, America today. Well, I would say that would be in this context, that would be like your evangelical Christians. Right. <laughs> Accuse the Jews, right? Go ahead. And what they do? They went to who? They spake and said to the king. Oh, yeah. Huh? They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, Sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. Mm. And whoso falleth not down and worship, worshipeth that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Go ahead. There are certain Jews, <laughs> just like Haman, mm -hmm. there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Mm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, mm. nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage, here we go again, and fury, <laughs> commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Mm. Nebuchadnezzar spake and spoke unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, mm -hmm. nor worship the golden image which I have set up? It'd, say, it'd be like the president right now calling us up. Is it true y'all are not standing for the flag? Is it true y'all ain't keeping the laws of the land the way we told you to keep it? Okay. Let's find out what they did. Keep reading. Verse 15. Uh -huh. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet. So he said, when you hear that sound, you better get, you better do exactly what I tell you mm -hmm. to do. Keep reading. The flute, <laughs> harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music. Ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Which I have made. Go ahead. Well, but if ye worship not. <laughs> Ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God uh. that shall deliver you out of my hand? Oh, that sound, that's pride. Sound like Pharaoh. Sound like Pharaoh, right? And Antiochus. Right, and sound like this man. Mm-hmm. 
Who, where your God at? How your God going to save you from my hands? Because I got the power. I'm a superpower. You, who going to stop me? Okay, keep reading. Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Go ahead. If it be so, our God. Our who? Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king mm -hmm. but if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up <laughs> but keep reading then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury uh -oh. and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach Meshach and Abednego therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it want to be heated. Now, why would you want to do something like that? Why would you want to make it hotter? Because we're trying to keep your dog on quit twisted laws. And we're showing y'all the, the parallel, y'all. The oppressor always going to keep you in sin. Same with this Babylon. Another dark skinned nation. Before that, the Edomites. So we're showing you every nation don't want us keeping commandments. Keep reading. And he commanded the most mighty men <laughs> that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Go ahead. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Go ahead. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, <laughs> the flame of the fire slew those men that mm. took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Go ahead. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Go ahead. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Mm. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Raphael, let me say something right here. Go ahead. After verse 23 is when you're supposed to read the three holy children. Exactly. They took all of that out, what happened in there, and jumped to the end. Yep. Verse. Great point. Great point, Jake. Great point. Go ahead. Verse 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said to his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men <laughs> loose walking in the midst of the fire. Go ahead. And they have no hurt. Mm. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. The son of who? The son of God. It's Old Testament, right? Yep. Why is he being talked about? The son of God going through the fire with them. <laughs> it was coming. <laughs> Verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the most high God, mm, mm. come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire and the princes governors and captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power nor was an hair of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them and you know what, y'all? I just wanted that to show y'all that because Daniel and the other brothers did not transgress the law of idolatry, the Lord was with them. But that's true persecution, y'all, because they were supposed to die. You know what else, Ralph? What's up? They were believers. Exactly. True believers. Yep. Because they believed that if we, if they, they understood that if we, did that, the Lord would have killed us anyway. You see, that's what y'all understand. 
if we go against God, that's why I made the decree earlier. I said, when you're in this truth, y'all, and we go against this truth, the Lord going to judge us. That's why, we keep try, that's why we keep trying to tell brothers and sisters, when you come to this model of this truth, y'all, understand that this is for life. Okay? And then go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 24. Man, they had faith. You better believe it. They had faith. Yes. I mean, think about that, y'all. I mean, picture what they have to go through. The king already told you. That's like the president telling you now. If you don't do what I tell you to do, we're going to put you in a firing squad and kill you. Okay? If you don't do what we tell you to do. Do you think you have enough power? you think you have enough faith to deal with that? All I'm going to say is, Lord knoweth. I pray. You know what I'm saying? But like I said before, we're going to go to, let's go to Matthew chapter 24. And let's start at verse 4. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Right. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Don't you see it today? I am anointed. I am anointed. Christ said many should come in my name. Go ahead. And shall deceive many. Aren't people being deceived today with these doctrines? They're being deceived by believing you're supposed to keep commandments. Everybody's supposed to come together. All this nonsense is being put out there to our people. Go ahead. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Are uh, we hearing that today? With Iran. We hear about over there with Russia. We hear about in China. We're hearing these wars and rumors of wars. Because on the contrary... People are more concerned about this, this vaccine going on, not realizing things are going on all, all, all over the world. Oh, yeah. Things are still heating up. See, we're more concerned about the pandemic, but in the midst of the pandemic, you got other stuff going on around the world. Go ahead. See that ye be not troubled. Go ahead. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. He's telling you the party just starting. Go ahead. For nations shall rise against nations. Aren't we seeing that today? We seeing these little race wars, these little things, these insurrections going on. Nation shall rise against nation. Go ahead. And kingdom against kingdom. Go ahead. And there shall be famines mm -hmm. and pestilences right. and earthquakes in diverse places. Go ahead. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Just, this is just the beginning of sorrows, brothers and sisters. Read on. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Go ahead. And shall kill you. And shall do what? And shall kill you. Go ahead. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Why are you hated of all nations for my name's sake? If he came for everybody. Everybody. Why is that the case? Why is he saying that? Because he understands that when we bring this truth out here, all the nations going to hate that. Because this twofold. This is during the time of, of Christ. He's telling the disciples this. But this is twofold because right now we are the disciples of Christ. Students of Christ. Okay? Keep reading. And then shall many be offended mm. and shall betray one another and hate one another. Go ahead. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Don't you see that all on social media? Don't you see that all on the me actual media? They're deceiving many. Lying to folks. Telling everybody we all the same. No, we ain't. That ain't what the Bible say. Keep reading. And because iniquity shall abound. Sin, so when sin shall abound, go ahead. The love of many shall wax cold. Go ahead. But he that shall endure unto the end, uh -huh. the same shall be saved. And what that means is, y'all, you ain't saved yet. Because Christ said that you should be enduring to the end. That means until you check out or to when Christ cracked that sky. And neither has happened yet. So guess what? You ain't saved. Okay? Go ahead. And this gospel. And this what? Gospel. Go ahead. Of the kingdom uh -huh. shall be preached. To all the world. Go ahead. For a witness unto all nations. Go ahead. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. See, that's what y'all have to understand that all this has to happen and then the end shall come, which means ain't Christianity or these different doctrines being preached all over the world? So the good news that Israel can repent and get the kingdom right. has to go throughout the whole earth so all Israel can hear it. Exactly. That gospel has to go throughout the earth. Exactly. Because Christianity been gone throughout the earth. Right. 
<laughs> right. Right. That's, that's it. Let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 7. We got to show y'all another brother who put his life on the line. Um, we can start at... Um, Huh? Show him that it's him and then go. Yeah, you sure it is him, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh yeah, I was gonna do that. Let me see. Six. Yeah. Acts seven. Yeah, it's, it's Acts seven, but it's showing that it's him. Well, don't worry. We can just we can expound, and then when we get down, we can explain. Did let y'all know in Acts seven, right? We're gonna go to this. Acts. What happened is Stephanus is going at the Israelites, who is in the midst of sin. So what he's doing is he's correcting them the same way our people do, are today. We're trying to correct our fellow Israelite brothers and sisters who are unbelievers as well and people that are believers. So what Stephanus is doing, as a matter of fact, um, let's just go, let's go right to, let's go, what? It's, it's right here in 6 and 5. Yeah, 6 and 5. All right. Just to prove that it's Stephanus. It okay. says, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephan, a man of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. And Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom, whom they set before the apostles. Go ahead. And when he had prayed, they laid their hands on him. So in verse 7, it says, And the word of God increased, mm -hmm. and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of their priests were obedient to the faith. And then you look at Stephan is full of faith and power, did great mm. wonders and miracles among the people. Now, this is what this is what um Stephanus is doing. Okay. Stephanus is basically rebuking right. the people. Right? But start at go to verse 44, 7 and 44 now. Yeah, because he just starts going over the whole history of Israel. Right, right. and we, ain't, we don't have time for that. <laughs> but let's go, let, but let's find out what happened to that brother. Go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 7 and verse 44. Go ahead. Our fathers. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, uh -huh. and he had appointed speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, mm. <laughs> which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, mm -hmm. whom God drave out before the face of our fathers <laughs> until the days of David. Right. Go ahead. Who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Mm -hmm. Howbeit the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as the prophet, as saith the prophet, heaven is my witness and mm. earth is my footstool. Mm -hmm. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Mm. Or what is the place of my rest? Have not my hand made all these things? Go ahead. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Because Stephan is going in. He said, you always resist the Holy Ghost, the commandments in Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, because when you read up, it's going to show you what the Holy Ghost really is. So it's showing you the commandments. Same way today, I resist the Holy Ghost. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart, which means you are unclean. Okay, Unclean, you know, go ahead. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Right. <laughs> and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, mm. of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, <laughs> who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept That's it. That's the point. You kept, you had to, you, you got the laws, but you same what y'all want to do today. You, you got the laws sitting right here in the Bible. But you don't want to keep it, though. Keep reading. When they heard those things, they were cut to the heart. Mm. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Like, Go ahead. Oh, that, that, 
they, yeah. <laughs> but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, mm. looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. So if God and Christ is the same, why is he able to see the glory and the Father sitting right there? And full of the Holy and Ghost. And full of the Holy Ghost. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. He's Verse 56. And behold, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Mm. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. Sound like he told them we want no Trinity. Right. And they got mad. Right. No. Right. <laughs> I'm just joking. Right. Verse 58. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. Mm. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Mm -hmm. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Mm. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Think about that's persecution right there, y'all. This brother was, was, was basically standing boldly for the Lord and to the people. And what they do, they killed the brother. And he, uh, and he asked the Lord to forgive, forgive him for what they, what they did. And then you got our people that can't understand what praying for the dead is you praying for the most how to have mercy on them. Jump down to verse 8. You're going to chapter 8, verse 1. Uh, oh, yeah. I know you like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. The book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. Go ahead. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. Which was where? Which was at Jerusalem. Are you sure it wasn't in Rome? Which was at Jerusalem. The church was always the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Wherever they go. Right. Go ahead. And they were all scattered abroad. Mm. Scattered abroad uh -huh. throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Think about that, y'all. That's persecution. But y'all say after they persecuting the Christians. No, they persecute the the the, the 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 um the Israelites who were at Jerusalem. Well, let's say okay, let's say they did persecute the Christians. Right. Who were the Christians? Right. We, we, you go to yeah, it? let's go to it. Let's go to the scholarship, brother. Go right to the scholarship. Show y'all something. The first book is go to um, the uh, history of the church. Mm hmm. That's going to deal with this time period. Right, right, right. We got to show you all the history. Go ahead. So we're going to use these three books right here, and we'll tell you which ones when uh, he's about to read them. Okay. One, history of the church, history of the Christian church, uh, ecclesiastical history, and the Jews and Moors in Spain. Yeah, so okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is this is the first one. This is from the actually this is from the middle book, the ecclesiastical history. The learned the learned and eloquent the The learned and the eloquent, 
the deacons and ministers, and chiefly the rich, for the confiscation of The confiscation of what? That's it? Yeah, it goes to the next page. Okay. Of the great multitude? Uh, you got to go up, though. Yeah, so. That's a different book. Yeah, I meant that. See, this is, this is the thing. We're showing um, the historical. Um, just showing the historical facts of what the persecution was based on the history of it. And what a lot of people don't understand is um, throughout history, our people have always been persecuted. You know what I'm saying? Because it's dealing with Nero. See, what y'all don't know is Nero was the emperor, one of the emperors of Rome. Okay? And he basically killed most of the disciples. So get that the left column first. You have to pay attention to this, y'all. Because they always want to try to throw up there, oh, you know, the Christians were persecuted and stuff like that, not realizing who was, who was behind this. Because it's funny how Rome adopts Christianity, but yet it was a political doctrine. Right. So I had made a post earlier this week, and I might put it in biblical histories, mm -hmm. where it shows that the original Christians uh, were called... Uh, the sect of Nazarenes. Right. And they were Jews that followed Christ. They kept commandments and followed Christ. So those are your original Christians before things got changed. You able to see it? You can? <laughs> you can't you can't blow it up? That, that, you want it bigger than that? I mean if you so you can read it. I can read it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, he's going to read it, y'all. I'm going to have to post it later. I have um, to figure out how to post it on there later. I can post it. External okay. history of the church, whose fortunes the rapacious magistrates were perpetually gape, gaping were the persons most exposed to the dangers of the times. Mm -hmm. The actions and sayings of these holy martyrs from the moment of their imprisonment to the last gasp were carefully recorded in order to be read on certain days and thus proposed as models to future ages. Few, however, of these ancient acts have reached our times, the greatest part of them having been destroyed during that dreadful persecution which Di Diol Diocletian? Diocletian carried on 10 years with 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 such fury against the Christians. So what that's saying is like you had Paul when he was in prison their doc they were documenting things that was going on so that you could read it as examples for other brothers and sisters mm -hmm. to keep them strong. Mm -hmm. But they're saying during the persecution Diocletian had all that stuff destroyed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For a most diligent search was then made after all their books and papers, and all of them that were found were committed to the flames. Mm. Keep reading, or we'll go jump, we'll go to, the next jump to the next yellow section down. Jeez. This is uh, part 13. It would have been surprising if under such a monster of cruelty as Nero, the Christians had enjoyed the sweets of tranquility and freedom. This indeed was far from being the case, for the perdious tyrant accused them of having set fire to the city of Rome, that horrid crime which he himself had committed, <laughs> and a barbarous pleasure, with a barbarous pleasure. In avenging this crime upon the innocent Christians, he ordered matters so that the punishment should bear some resemblance of the offense. Hey, notice it said the innocent Christians. Mm -hmm. So why were they being persecuted? It wasn't for being evil. 
Matter of fact, you don't see where they were at fault for anything. They're following after Christ. You can go ahead if um, you find it. Well, you want me to go to the next page? No, you, you okay. Know, yeah, keep going. Where you was at? Um, he ordered that he ordered matters so that the punishment should bear some resemblance of the offense. He therefore wrapped up some of them in combustible garments and ordered fire to be set to them when the darkness came on, that thus, like torches, they might dis dispel the obscurity of the night. So I don't know if y'all remember this. There's, if you go back 10 years, maybe yeah, or 10, 15 years, when you had computers and you had to put the software on them, they had this software called Nero Burning Software where you could burn your DVDs and CDs. Nero, burning software. He, because him burning our people. For what? He's the one that burnt the city down. Go ahead. Like torches, they might dispel the obscurity of the night, while others were fastened to crosses or torn to pieces by wild beasts or put to death in su such dreadful manner. This horrid persecution was set on foot in the month of November in the 64th year of Christ. And in it, according to some ancient accounts, St. Paul and St. Peter suffered martyrdom through the latter assertion is contested by many as being absolutely inconcilable with chrono chronology. The death of Nero, who perished, miserably in the year 68 put an end to the calamities of this first persecution under which during the space of four years Hold on, let me, uh, i know you can't see it but you can think about it. you think about this like we were we read the account of the seven the woman and her seven sons mm -hmm. And like Raphael said, who would do that to people? Who would put make a big frying pan and put people? Who thinks of stuff like that? These people think of the most exquisite tortures. We wouldn't even fathom them in our minds. Right. They think on this stuff. Right. You look at the Middle Ages, the things, that, the torture devices that they came up with. Right. That stuff got to come out of the mind of Satan. I mean, even now with death penalty, the, when they did the electric trail, who thinks about putting 10,000 volts in your body mm. to kill you? Who thinks about putting you a lethal injection? Who thinks about stuff like that? Who comes up with nuclear weapons to destroy a whole multitude of people? Right. Who thinks like that, y'all? I mean, listen, we're just hitting facts. Because at the end of the day, to think evil like that, to think about how, how, how I could dismember somebody, Take their skin, you see what I'm saying, and do things to people. That stuff, it, even hearing about it. Make shoes. Yeah, make shoes. You know, was that it? Yeah, it's gonna start right there. It's showing you. Um, under which the during the space of four years, the Christians suffered every sort of torment and affliction. Which the ingenious cruelty of their enemies could invent. Damn. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> Learned men are not entirely agreed with, re the, with regard to the extent of this persecution under Nero. Some conf confine it to the city of Rome, while others represent it as having raged through the whole empire. Mm. The latter opinion, which is also the more ancient, is undoubtedly to be preferred as it is certain that the laws enacted against the Christians were enacted against the whole body and not against particular churches. and were uh, Yeah, let me say this, because after 70 AD, which is shortly after this, they chased us throughout the entire kingdom. Yep. That's why we fled to the Western banks right. trying to get out of the reach of the Romans. Right. Persecution. Roman persecution, right? Mm -hmm. There was a... It's so a place below Morocco was like the last outpost of the Romans. Mm -hmm. And our people were trying to get past that point right there. Mm -hmm. Once you got, that's the Western Banks. That's where we settled at. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
and not against p particular churches, and were consequently enforced in the remote provinces. The authority of Tertullian confirms this, who tells us that Nero, the Domitian, huh? That's Domitian. The, Nero the, and Domitian had enacted laws against the Christians, of which Trajan had in part taken away the force and rendered them in some m measure without effect. Uh, you good, now go down. You can scroll down. Though immediately... This is uh, part 15. Though immediately after the death of Nero, the rage of this first persecution against the Christians ceased, yet the flame broke out anew in the year 93 or 94 under Domitian, a prince little inferior to Nero in wickedness. Oh. <laughs> wickedness. This persecution was occasioned. If we may give credit to Hegepit, Hegesippius by Domitian's fear of losing the empire, for he had been informed that among the relatives of a, among the relatives of Christ, a man should arise, who possessing a turbulent and ambiguous spirit, was to excite commotions in the state and aim a supreme domi dominion. However, that may have been the persecution renewed by this unworthy prince was was extremely violent, though his untimely death soon put a stop to it. Mm. Flavius Clemens, a man of conciliar dignity, and Flavia Dom, Domi, Domi, Domitilia, Domitilia, his niece, or as some say, his wife, were principal martyrs that suffered in the persecution in which also the apostle John was banished to the Isles of Patmos. Mm. Tertullian and other writers inform us that before his banishment, he was thrown into a cauldron of boiling oil, from which he came forth not only living, but even unhurt. God. This story, however, is not attested in such manner as to preclude all doubt. But we know for sure he, was, he got exiled to the Isle of Patmos, right. and that's where he died. Just for this part, um, you want to go to a scripture now? Cause we, no, I want to come back to. Um, no, how, how much more stuff you got? Because I was trying to. We can. Yeah, let's go to the Jews and Moors in Spain. That so we'll cover another time period. Mm -hmm. This is during the Inquisition. We can bring the other out some other time. It's yeah. some. It's some more detail on Nero. Yeah. But we'll do that some other time. Yeah, yeah. Because y'all understand something, y'all. A lot of this stuff has been going on throughout history. That's like page three, I think. That we're yeah. showing y'all. So right we're going to use that, but it's not the first one. We need the first one. That's, that's the second. No. no, that's the second, I think. This is going to be 183. This is 180. Yeah, roll with that. <clears throat> and so now we're going to uh, the 1400s. The Inquisition. It's basically the same thing mm -hmm. that happened in during the time of the Greeks and the time of the Romans. Right. Matter of fact, it's the same people that the Great Red Dragon. That should be that's that should be the first one. Okay. The Inquisition. This is page one seventy nine, and it reads: Castile, the kingdom of Isabella, had till then refused admission to the Inquisition. At one time, its introduction was recommended, yeah, well done, yeah. and the whole populace arose in rebellion. Isabella herself trembled at the very mention of it, but an evil, 
but in an evil hour, Thomas de Torquemada Tor Tor condemned to infamous immortality by the signal part which, her, which he performed in the tragedy of the Inquisition, became her confessor. Mm. That man, if man, I may name him, that vilest blot upon the history of religion, of Spain, mm -hmm. of civilization, was the fiend incarnate. His very name still represents the superlative of maniacal fana fanati fana fanaticism. <laughs> He labored hard to infuse into pure into the pure mind of the noble-hearted Isabella a fanaticism as fiendish as was his, and still and still she recoiled from the thought of introducing the monstrous slaughtering institution in her dominions. This dude was a devil. Right. Torquemada brought the weight of the entire church to bear upon her conscience, and still she refused. The fiend was not yet baffled. He influenced her husband, the crafty and greedy Ferdinand of Argonne, to advocate his cause. The husband prevailed. On the second day of January 1481, the Inquisition commenced. Operation in the city of Seville with Thomas de Torquemada as Inquis Inquisitor General of Castile and Argonne. Let me say this Aragon. real quick. Let me say this. So Torquemada, he wanted to torture people and put them to death. And Ferdinand, he wanted money. So they worked well together because when you claim somebody was Judaizing, and you put them to death and you took their money mm -hmm. and their property. Mm -hmm. And then they took that, the king took that, and then he used that money to, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, to finance other things like coming to this side of the world. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, a few years later, it found its way into every prominent town of Spain and confined itself everywhere almost wholly to the Jews. Almost wholly to the Jews. The Inquisition was almost wholly to the Jews. Go ahead. The severity and savage al alacrity. alacrity of it may best be learned from the appalling fact that during the 18 years of Takamata's ministry, an average of more than 6,000 convicted Six thousand convicted persons suffered annually from this cruel, tribu cruel tribunal by burning, by burning, or by condemnation to lifelong slavery, <laughs> or by endless torture, making an average of nearly seventeen a day. What? And the seventeen people a day tortured, burned to death. And why? For keeping commandments. Mm -hmm. They were inquiring to see if you were keeping God's commandments. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the entire number punished during its existence in Spain from 1481 to 1808 mm. amounted to 340,000 persons. All this to protect the interests of religion. All this for offenses so trivial that our blood boils with indignation at the very thought of the heraneous cruelty. Mm -hmm. It was sufficient to burn a convert as a relapsed heretic upon the mere accusation of crimes such as these. So here go the crimes. Go ahead. That he wrote better clothes or cleaner linen on the Jewish Sabbath. So if you got to looking good for the Sabbath day. Then on the other day of the week, that he had no fire in his house or the Jewish sa on the Jewish Sabbath. Not kindling a fire, not cooking on the Sabbath day. Right. That he ate meat of it. Uh, that he ate the meat of animals slaughtered by the Jews. So he didn't eat uh, anything strangled or blood. <laughs> mm -hmm. That he abstained from eating pork. Uh, dietary law. Mm -hmm. 
that he gave his child a Hebrew name. Uh huh. And yet he was prohibited by law under I shall. Oh, it goes. That's another page. Yes, yeah, this is, a, this is that was eighty, but and this is eighty-two. Okay, huh? This is one eighty. That was one eighty, and this is one eighty-two. Is there one eighty-one? I can. Let me see. Let me. That's seventy-nine, eighty, eighty-two. No, so go back to eighty-two then. Okay. Just read eighty-two because it go, it goes to something else. That was naming the things that. They would um, kill you for, burn you for, whatever. Keeping God's commandments. Right. Okay. It's madness. They do not want you keeping God's commandments, which is righteousness. Christ said, persecuted for my name's sake, for righteousness. Not for being wicked, mm -hmm. for righteousness. Trying to do, thus saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. You got to I spare you. Um, page 182. I shall spare you a, I shall spare you a recital of the tortures of the, and of the sufferings endured in the deepest vaults of the Inquisition, where the cries of the victims could fall on, on no ear save that of the tormentors. Hmm. It is difficult to realize that these iron-hearted and iron-handed henchmen who thus eagerly passionately with a thirst for blood that knew no mercy Damn. with zeal that never tired devoted their whole life to cruelties such as we encounter here could have been human beings much less ministers of Christ mm. I shall spare you and spare myself a recital of these sufferings I shall not speak of the tortures by rack and rope mm. and fire and water, how the victim's joints were dislocated, how every body was roasted over a slow fire. Oh, every bone was broken. How every bone in their body was broken, mm. how, the, how the body was roasted over a slow fire. Go. That's good enough, man. You know That's something, y'all, you know what's sad about that? We read about that in the Bible itself with the, with the woman and the seven sons. Oh, you still got more? Yeah, I just had to um, scroll up. I'm sorry. I cannot speak of these tortures. I can only refer That's you it. to the history of the Inquisition. Mm. That's another book. Mm -hmm. mm. It's a bunch of them. By Don Juan Antonio Lorento, whose records are authentic as he himself was secretary to the Inquisition to Moshim's. Ecclesiastical history, we got that. We just read or about it. Prescott, Ferdinand, Ferdinand and Isabella, mm. Volume One, Chapter Seven, to endure all these tortures and live, was thought positive proof of satanic life, and the strongest ground for burning. Nearly all pled guilty to whatever they were accused of, and more, and mo and to more. Two, after a short experience with the rack and confession brought public burning. This was the last scene in the bloody tragedy, so wrongly named Auto de Fe, Auto de fe. an act of, act of faith. That's it. You know what's really sad about that, y'all? That's this done. See, so called Christians need to understand that that was happened at the hands of them. You're right. That's the so called Christian church. The so called Christian church. Was doing that to our people who were trying to keep commandments, which I want to call Judaizers today. KKK, same thing, KKK. Exactly, they saying they extremist Christians as well with these angelicals. So the same mentality that they had back then, they got today. You think for you do you do not think for one minute, all right, that these people are not capable of pulling this crap off again today. You know, Google cap and rotate. Watch this. Cap and rotate. The, inquis the, the inquisitors did this. And he was saying how, you know, like basically, how can a man, mm -hmm. you 
supposed to be a representative of Christ, mm -hmm. you got no kind of mercy whatsoever. Right. Just doing all manner of torture mm -hmm. to our people. Caparote, K A P I R O T E. Yeah, I want you to go to second address. Okay. Chapter 15. O T E. K A P R O T E. No, C A. C A? Yeah. Yeah, this is what the inquisitors, the torturers wore. Caparote and go to images and look at how they, and I'm gonna tell you, it look, look at how it looks. Oh wow! <laughs> pop, 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 pop it up, pop it up, pop it up. This is that's what they wore during the Inquisition. Look at that. Look familiar, brothers and sisters. Look just that's why we say same spirit, spirit, same people, man. Ku Klux Klan, right? You see that? And where does the red? What did the Grand Dragon wear? He wears that. He wears that like red. Ca yeah, Catholic have a festival like that. Same thing, same spirit. And just to give y'all understand, that Nero was responsible for killing Paul as well. We did, we just read that, okay? But uh, but just for time's sake, I have to you know y'all can read about that. You know, with Paul saying you know he fought a good fight. Paul understood his time was the part at hand because Nero at that time was about to kill Paul. Okay, because most of the disciples were martyred. Matthew all of them was martyred. Look at that. You see that? Uh huh. And our people follow that madness. Look at that. With the cross. Look at that. Look at that. Now, now, now. Y'all screen, screenshot that if, while you can. Yep. You know, what a Google or whatever. Yep, because they're going to they're gonna snatch that off. Okay, look at that. Look, look at that. It goes hand in hand, brothers and sisters. Some of y'all want to follow, keep following these doctrines. Keep on following it. Cause look, at who, look at who's behind the persecution of our people. And that's today. That, that's a recent picture. Same spirit. I mean, keep in mind, keep in mind, these yeah. are the same people. You got burnt or you got sent into slavery. Exactly. Slavery. You had no choice. The same way they did to us in the Maccabees. Either you're going to accept the king's commandment or you put that same thing with the Babylon. Accept the king's commandment. Same different, it's same spirit, y'all, to keep us from keeping commandments. That's persecution. Go to the book of Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-one, brother. The book of Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, and verse twenty-one. Go ahead. Mm. Like as they do yet this day, this day they still doing the same thing to our people. You better believe they still hanging you. They still let they not, the media ain't gonna talk about it, but they still got these little race wars and they and they call them race soldiers. They still hanging our people today. They don't talk about it because they fear uprising. But they know what's going on. It's still the same mentality, the same spirit as on these people today. Same thing. Keep going. Unto my chosen. Until my what? My chosen. Go ahead. So will I do also. And recompense thee in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord God. Verse 22. My right hand shall not spare the sinner. And who's on the right hand? Christ. Christ. Because he going to be the one that take down these son of a guns who've been doing this to our people who stand so stiffly for the Lord. Mm. Keep reading, brother. And my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. Innocent blood upon the earth. Give me Revelations chapter 6 and verse 9. Read already verse 11. This is what our brothers and sisters are saying to the Lord. They ain't saying, oh, we forgive them, Lord. They ain't saying that. Yeah, Revelation yeah. chapter 6 verse 9. Read already 11, brother. The book of Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, mm -hmm. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain. For the what? For the word of God. And for what? And for the testimony. To the law and to the testimony. Same thing. They, 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 these brothers and sisters died because they stood for the law and the testimony back then. Let's find out what they say to the Lord. Go ahead. Which they held. 
Verse 10. Go ahead. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, uh -huh. How long, O Lord? Go ahead. Holy and true, mm -hmm. dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? Are you sure we ain't going out giving our precious hugs and love? What they saying? Do what? O Lord, holy and true. Do what? Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Go ahead. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Mm. And it was said unto them that they should, they should rest for yet, yet for a little season. Go ahead. Until their fellow servants, mm -hmm. also of their brethren. And their what? Of their brethren. Go ahead. That should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. That's letting y'all know, brothers and sisters, is this going to heat up? And that means that you that stand strong for the Lord, got to make a decision. Because these son of a guns doing the same thing they was doing in the ancient times, they're going to start doing it again today. The same way they said, the martyrs, the same way the disciples died, the same way all our people died, who stood stiffly for the name of the Lord. Just chapter 2, verse 34. Second Ezra, chapter 2, verse 34. And I want you to read all the way down. We read this before, we got to read it again. For to comfort our people. The book of Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 34. Go ahead, brother. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen that hear and understand, mm -hmm. look for your shepherd. Look for your what? Look for your shepherd. Looking for our shepherd. Go ahead. He shall give you everlasting rest, mm. for he is nigh at hand. Go ahead. That shall come in the end of the world. Uh huh. Be ready to the reward of the king. Be ready for what? The reward of the king. Go ahead. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. All praise read. Flee the shadow of this world. Flee the shadow of this world. Flee all this nonsense, the democracy, the ways of the world. Flee all that crap. Come back to keeping the commands and the faith of Christ. Read. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. Go ahead. I testify my Savior openly. Go ahead. Oh, receive the gift that is given on that is given you, and be glad, giving thanks unto him that have called you to the heavenly kingdom. Go ahead. A arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed. In the feast of the Lord. If you don't know where to be sealed, you go when you go to Isaiah 8 and 20, talking about sealed in the law. Sealed in the law in Isaiah 8 and 16. Go ahead, brother. Which are departed, which are departed from the shadow of the world mm -hmm. and have received glorious garments of the Lord. Did we just read about those garments yes, in Revelation? Sir. Yes, sir. The garments of righteousness. Go ahead, that, brother. That wedding feast. You better believe it. Take thy number, O Sion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of Fulf the Lord. Fulfilled the what? Fulfilled the law of the Lord. I thought the law wasn't important. They fulfilled the law of the Lord to the law and the testimony. Read. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Mm. <laughs> it's like Romans 6. Exactly. I mean, Romans 11, my yeah. bad. Uh -huh. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, mm -hmm. may be hallowed. Go ahead. I, Esdras, saw upon the Mount Sion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. Mm. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of great stature. Go ahead. Taller than all the rest. Mm -hmm. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns mm. and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. He's given our rulership. When he said crowns, he's given our rulership to the Israelites. Read on. So I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing. And put on the immortal and have confessed the name of God. When it says confess the name of God, y'all means they kept the commandments. That's what it means. Because when you go to, when you go to um, Psalms, it's going to show you that. Psalms 119 verse 55 is showing you 
the name of the Lord. Talking about the laws. Read on. And to put off sin and mm. put on the spirit of Christ. There you go. Now are they crowned and receive palms. Go ahead. Then said I unto them, uh -huh. what young person is it that crowned them and giveth them palms in their hands? Go ahead. So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of God. The son of who? The son of God. Go ahead. Whom they have confessed in the world. Mm. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood stiff, so stiff. Uh-huh. For the name of the Lord. That means they kept the commandments to the death. They strive for the truth and to the death. They stood so stiff they became martyrs like we read in Revelation. That's why it goes hand in hand. Go ahead, brother. Verse 48. Then the angel said unto me, go thy way and tell my people. Tell who? My people. Go ahead. What manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy God thou hast seen. First Peter chapter 2 verse 21 to finish up brothers and sisters that's what we have to look forward to if we endure unto the end strive for the truth unto the death and the Lord shall fight for thee understand that brothers and sisters first Peter 2 and 21 to finish up brothers. the book of first Peter chapter 2 and verse 21 go ahead for even here unto were ye called go ahead because Christ also suffered for us mm. leaving us an example go ahead that ye should follow his steps. We follow his steps. Read. Who did no sin. Go ahead. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Mm. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. Mm. When he suffered, he threatened not. Go ahead. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. And that's what we're supposed to do, brothers and sisters. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29, just to finish up. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 29. Go ahead. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, mm -hmm. we ought to obey God rather than men. And that's who we must obey, brothers and sisters. We must obey the Most High in Christ rather than the silly ideologies and philosophies of men. We want to give the Most High in Christ all the praise and glory. Philanus even teaches his word, you know, just a, just a little bit, y'all. I pray that everybody got some out of today's class, Um, you know, just because we closed in the Bible. Do me, you have to close it, okay? So y'all stay strong, you know, keep these commandments in the faith of Christ because understand some y'all, it's about to heat up. So, you know, we stay prayed up. I pray that everybody, everybody stay safe, stay healthy, okay? Understand that this is the, this is the time that is about to come to pass, y'all, that we read about in the prophecies, okay? So like I said before, y'all stay strong, stay prayed up, okay? And with that, I want to say shalom.